I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Praise the Lord Gaba Church. And praise the Lord those ones who are online. We are so excited to be with you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Some few minutes to meet there. So this morning, we are going, I'm going to talk about accessing God's promises. Accessing God's promises. But before I talk about that, 30 years ago, I joined Gaba Church. 30 years ago. And I'm also asking, how many of us were here in 1994? Uh-huh. Counting on fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Thank you for standing the tests of Gaba Church. Amen. But I want to tell you, God is at work. If I can just count them on fingers, and the way I see all of you here, it shows that God is at work. Tell your neighbor, God is at work. If you don't believe, look at your neighbor and know that you were not here, but you are now here. Amen? That is testimony number one. I'm talking about accessing God's promises because while we were here, we prayed and waited upon the Lord and the Lord told us we are going to experience his goodness. He's going to bring increase. He's going to bring fruitfulness and multiplication. Hallelujah. I had no children and God provided children. Now two of them are married. Hallelujah. So we bless the Lord. And not only two, but many, even Alan is my son. Hallelujah. So we bless the Lord for whatever he's doing. And then the other testimony I have is about the city fellowship. Everywhere in the air you can experience, you can sense that there is something God is doing in the city. Hallelujah. But one thing I want to tell you is that when God speaks to you, sometimes things are not very clear and you don't really understand what he's doing but God is up to something hallelujah so in 2015 2016 there, there is a group of ladies who used to pray here they are called Kakeka ladies we used to pray we used to wait upon the Lord on behalf of Gaba Church and one time God started putting into our spirits that one day you will go to the city. And we started hearing it, we started hearing it, and every one of us said, yeah, God is sending us to the city. But as you know, disciplined people don't just run away. They don't just disappear and go to the city. So we had to go to our three pastors. That was Pastor Martin, uh, Pastor Sa, and my husband. We prepared a very wonderful meal for them to eat so that they may be able to prophesy. <laughs> and then we ate, we rejoiced, and then they said, uh-huh, what do you have to tell us? That is what he says. What do you have to tell me? What do you have to tell us? Our God is sending us to the city. Come again. God is sending us to the city. You ladies, he said, yes. God is sending, that is what we sense, that is what we feel. And all of them talked, the three of them. They said, the way we see you as women, we don't believe what you are saying. First of all, your ministry is struggling. That time we had a struggle whereby young ladies never wanted to join the women's ministry. I don't know why, but they had reasons. Your ministry is struggling. Now, what are you going to take to the city? First of all, be strong enough. Make sure that your ministry is strong. By the time you go to the city, at least you will be somewhere we will say, now you go. And we went back very disappointed. But remember, God is the one who told us. So now it is coming to a year. Everyone is singing about the city fellowship. <laughs> Hallelujah. God raised a sister because we were together. I remember we did a very wonderful conference called Refresh. So that is how we found ourselves in the city. That is how we found ourselves hosting ladies in the city for dinner. 
And then Dr. Martin started stating, uh-huh, you see, you are now in the city. You are now in the city. You are now in the city. Then God rose Sister Jennifer. The Lord steered her up and she said, yeah, this thing has to happen. So she came back to Pastor Peter and told him, you know what? We are going. We are going. I'm looking for places here and there. It took a while for her to find it. But finally, she found it. And we were in Imperial Royal. We are now in. Hallelujah. All that, the glory goes back to God. But you also want to thank Sister Jennifer because she braved her way to make sure that this city fellowship happens. Hallelujah. So it means that the promise came to pass, but we had to wait. We had to be disciplined enough. We had to wait for the rightful time for it to happen in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It is also going to happen to you. Sometimes they stop you from doing what you want to do or what God is telling you, but in the rightful time, it is going to come to pass. Hallelujah. So many of us want to have blessings which God gives. And everyone gets what? Excited. When they tell you God is going to bless you. Or you are going to get married. Or you are going to America. You get so excited. But then, before that time comes, there is preparation. God prepares you. There are certain things you need to learn. There are assignments you need to, to do. And then you have to do what? To prepare yourself for everything God has purposed to come to pass. So I'm here to let you know that don't get discouraged when the time is not right. I know in the rightful time, it is going to come to pass. Hallelujah. So it happens in the fullness of time according to his plan. God has a plan for each one of us. It is not for some few people, but it is for every one of us because God loves us. Amen. But God takes us through seasons like discipline. The Lord wants to discipline us. There are certain delays which happen in our lives and you ask God, why is this delay, this delay, this delay happening? But God wants you to wait. He wants to, to you to start sowing because you cannot reap unless you sow. And then God wants to use discernment in your life like the pastors looked at us and we were not ready. Indeed, we were not ready. But already, God was sowing a seed within us that one day you will find yourself in a city. So I want to let you know that if you want to see God's blessing, be where God is moving. When we talk about the city fellowship, you say, I'm for Gaba Church. But then when God is the one who made it happen, will you be part of what God is doing? Amen. When you are part of it, I believe you are going to enjoy the blessings of the Lord. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he a son of man to change his mind. I have tested him. I have seen him. Me, when I hear anything from the Lord, I just hang on there. Whether people say yes or whether they say no, I just say as long as I've heard from him, I will hang to it and it will come to pass. I have seen God doing amazing things as long as I'm hearing right. But sometimes we hear and we don't hear right. But his promises are yes and amen. So we need to access God's promises. Hallelujah. Amen. So our key verse, this is the key verse the Lord gave me. Even before I got the topic, the, the heading, he gave me this scripture. And I read and I read and asked myself, God, what do you mean? And what do you want me to tell the people? And he told me that some of the people are restless. Some of them think that I'm not working. But let them look at what I'm doing in their midst. That's when they'll be able to believe. God is doing something in your life, but maybe you are not mindful or you don't understand what he's doing. But even when you don't understand, in his rightful time, it will come to pass and you'll be able to understand. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, verse 10 and 11, I know so many people love this scripture, but as we see, you are going to see that there are certain things God requires of us 
in order for this promise to come to pass. Verse 10 says, this is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised, and I will bring you home again. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. The plans for good, not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. In those days, when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. And I will be found by you, found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I have sent you. And will bring you home again to your own land. So when you hear such words, you get excited. But then they were going under certain tests which God wanted them to understand. First of all, they were to stay in this land for 70 years. Hallelujah. They got a message from Jeremiah. He sent them a message. He was in Jerusalem, but he sent them a prophetic message through a letter. And he told them that this is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years. Whether they liked it or not, it was 70 years. And God is not a man to lie. He meant it and it was going to happen. So the truth of, of the matter is, they found themselves in exile because of sin and bondage. They were in captivity for 70 years. And then God came and spoke to them. As a father, God is a father. And when he's a father, he speaks. And we have to listen to what he says. He says he has the plans, the good plans, not for disaster. God has a plan for you. Plan not to destroy you, not for disaster, but to give you a hope and a future. Hallelujah. But this future was to come through prayer and also them understanding that we are here to stay. But he had a plan. So I want you to tell your neighbor, God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you. But do you qualify for those plans he has? Do you qualify? That is the question. When we hear that message, it brings us joy. And we want to cling unto it. But we need to know that there are certain steps we need to go through them. They are divinely ordained and they are not human. And no one plans them but God himself. He's powerful and he makes his promises come to pass. One thing I want to tell you, his promises will come to pass. Whether we like it or not, they will come to pass. Now we are at his disposal. Are we ready to receive whatever he planned for us? The promises, you've been hearing words here and there, but one day they will come to pass. But he wants us to be ready for the what? For, the, for the, the plans he has for us. And then ready for the tests. Because the tests help us. They examine us. They try us. And then you become the kind of person who is fit for that what? For that assignment. You cannot go to that assignment when you are raw. You have to be mature enough. Who is not wavering? Who is what? Weak. But he wants you to be strong. Hallelujah. So number one is a discipline test. A discipline. God is testing our discipline. Are you disciplined enough to take on the plans he has for you? It is a moral test. The character test. Hallelujah. I told the people in the past services that God uh, first what, touched my body and I felt very sick. And then later on he healed me. That was number one test. Number two test was hearing a voice from him telling me, you are now going for training for Bible school for three years. It was very tough on my side. I didn't know what he was telling me, and I didn't know why he was taking me there. But he told me, go to Bible school, nothing. I told him, I don't know how to preach. I'm not a people person. All those were excuses. He told me, there for three years. And indeed, I went. So when I reached there, I was tested left, right, and center. First of all, even the learnings, the, the theology was tough on my side because I was in a secular school. Now here I am in Bible school. I'm learning about God. 
I don't know who God is because I had just given my life to Christ. It was just confusing. Then the situation around me. Hmm? Can you imagine having a, a, a dormitory in a classroom? How many of you have ever slept in classrooms? No one. So God was just teaching me something. Hallelujah. No bathroom. Not the toilet. The toilets were there. No bathroom. So you would wake up at six in the morning. Go find a tree where nobody sees and then you bathe. And then you run back to the classroom where boys will find you. You dress up and they will find you seated. That discipline. Hallelujah. So everything was just tormenting. When you talk about the food, because I had never been in a boarding school, that was my first time. So eating posho day in and out was a challenge. So God was disciplining me to be a resilient person. When you face hardship, what do you do? Hallelujah. And he was training me for here because 30 years are not a joke here. I've learned lessons. Mm? I've believed God together with my husband. Hallelujah. So if you are there saying, ah, when things come, you just cry your way out. You will not see God, I'm telling you. Hallelujah. You will not see him. So God is testing you. He's helping you to have a character which will be resilient, to overcome, especially where he's taking you. You don't know where he's taking you, but he says he has a good plan. It is not for disaster, but it is going to give you hope and a future. Hallelujah. So if you want to jump into that future, you have pictures of your future, you better work hard and be disciplined. Amen. So what is the meaning? To train someone to obey rules or code of behavior. Using punishment to co correct disobedience. Can you imagine? Punishment is to correct what? Disobedience. disobedience. These people were sent to Babylon to correct the disobedience which was in them. Hallelujah. God is our parents. He teaches us, he instructs us, and he disciplines us. Even our parents do that and sometimes we hate them. But then later on, we appreciate what they do for us because they are helping us become better people. Hallelujah. And then the training means that the action of teaching a person or animal a particular skill or type of behavior. So the training I got for three years, it was teaching me to be a skilled person. Hmm? I didn't know how to preach. I didn't know how to handle people. Everything was being taught there. And apart from that, there was faith. You had to believe God for everything. Everything, whether food or shoes or clothing. God made sure that all the things go away. You can ask me, were your parents there? Yes. Were your siblings there? Yes. But I had to walk by faith. Hallelujah. Because he was bringing out something which will be able to stand in Gaba Church. Hallelujah. So when I see luck in Gaba Church, me, I, I'm not scared. Recently, we were working with the Renewal Summit. People were crying in no money. Every time, no money. I, tell, I told them, no crying here. It is time to work with what God has provided. And lo and behold, God provided. Amen. So God is training us to have a skill. So make sure you learn your lessons well. When he's training you, he's up to something. Jeremiah 29 verse 1 says, Jeremiah wrote a letter from Jerusalem to the elders. Imagine even the elders were there. The priests were there. The prophets were there. And all the people who had been exiled in ba Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. So this letter was written by Jeremiah to these people who were taken there. But before he wrote the letter, when they were taken, this is what they did. Psalms 137, verse 1 to 4. It says, Beside the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept as we thought of Jerusalem, where they left. We put our harps hanging on them on the branches of poplar trees. For our captors demanded a song from us. Our tormentors insisted on a joyful hymn. Sing us one of the songs in Jerusalem. But how can we sing the songs of the Lord 
while in the pagan land. They started weeping. They started lamenting. They hung up their what? Their harps. And then the people told them, may your light shine. Can you please sing us the songs you used to sing in Jerusalem? We cannot sing in this pagan land. Me, I cannot preach this gospel. This gospel, I cannot preach to these sinners. But that is what the Lord is telling you. I cannot speak to my boss about Jesus. But this is what the Lord is telling you. Hmm? My father and my mother, they really don't understand this. But you be what God wants you to be. Amen. Hallelujah. All those I went through because they didn't know what it means to serve God. And they saw me struggling with money, with clothing. And they said, now what kind of God are you serving? What kind of God is this? If it is that God you are serving, go to your pastors. Let them take care of you. For us, we are not going to take care of you. Without you are going to school, you are going to earn money. Now where is the money? So instead of lamenting, I just focused on Jesus. I prayed and prayed and prayed and I continued serving. But these people, they hung up their what? Their harps. They told them to sing. They couldn't even sing. So you might be in a situation like that where God demands to do what? To you to sing, but you cannot. And then the delay, that is number two. The delay or waiting. God wants you to wait until his rightful time. Recently, we were in a certain place. We were supposed to board a, what, a bus and then later on board an airplane. We were standing at the door. You know how you enter from a, a, a different door and then you end up going out in a different door. So we ended up standing on the exit. But when the bus stopped, I saw people flying over our heads just to get the plane. But I believe everyone had a place. But why, 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 why do you have to fly over the heads of people? Hallelujah. God is calling upon us. Wait. When you find a, a, a red light, stop. Yeah? When you find a wrong shoe, don't try to do what. Find your way. God is training us to wait. So when it comes to wait, that is also a test. Please wait. God is building the fruit of the Spirit. That is found in Galatians 5.22. The patience, the self-control, the kindness, the faithfulness. All those things have to happen in our way, in our journey. But many times we are not ready to wait. When you see a red flag, you just do what? You just move on. One time I heard the story that there was a bridge which was being repaired and then the people kept on waving the flag. These people just looked at them and passed by them and they ended up drowning in the water. So we don't want you to drown. We want you to enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. So God has promises for us and he wants us to do what? To keep them. They were supposed to stay for 70 years, but they were hearing some tricksters who were telling them that, you know what? You are going to spend here a few years. You are going back home. But God is calling upon us to have a, a, what? a time of discernment. But before we have a time of discernment, there is a scripture here in verse 4 to 7. It says, that says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to, to all who were carried captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem, build houses, dwell in them, plant gardens, eat their fruit, take wives, beget sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may bear sons and daughters so that you may be increased there, not diminished. And seek the peace of the city, where I have caused to be carried away. Pray to the Lord for it, for in its peace you will have peace. So instead of lamenting, as you are waiting, please do something. Get lessons to learn. Here I was telling them, build houses and stay. Get wives and marry, and then get children. And when you get them, let them also get married like Alan and Hunia. Hallelujah. 
So God is up to something. Sometimes we wait and say, I'm waiting upon the Lord, doing nothing. But these ones, they were supposed to look for their own food. Go and get gardens and plant. Eat. Eat the fruit of their gardens. Hmm? Enjoy family. Hallelujah. God believes in family because he wanted them to be fruitful and multiply. And then he said, seek that for the peace of the city. Make sure you don't cause havoc in the place where you are. Otherwise, you will be in trouble. Seek peace in the city where I have caused to be carried away captive. He insisted to tell them that, yes, you are captives there, but you have to seek peace. Don't cause havoc. Sometimes when things go wrong, you continue to do havoc, but God is calling upon us to seek peace wherever we are, whether it is a place of work, in your marriage, in the church here. God is calling upon us to seek peace, but he says you pray and pray to the Lord for it, for it, for in its peace, you will have peace. Hallelujah. So God is telling us that whatever is troubling you, wherever you are, whether it is a job, whether it is a ministry, whether it is work, you pray. Hallelujah. When you pray, you are going to do what? You are going to experience the goodness of the Lord. And then the other one is discernment. Please discern. Discern, have discernment in whatever you are doing. Sometimes we want to hear tricksters tricking us and we run with them. Or people who are trying to delay us, putting us off track. But here, verse 20, verse 8 to 9 says, This is what the Lord of heaven's armies of God, Israel, says. Do not let your prophets and, mis mis and fortune tellers who are with you in the land of Babylon trick you. Do not listen to their dreams because they are telling you lies in my name. I have not sent them. And then the Lord concluded, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Do not listen to trick stars. Have a spirit of discernment. Have people who really know who God is. Let them walk with you. I was hearing a preacher and he was saying that do not seek seeming lessons from drowning people. Hallelujah. Because if this person is drowning and then you are seeking lessons, it means that you are also going to drown with that person. Look up to the leadership, leadership which will be able to lead you into the right paths. Their parents, they are also ready to lead you. They are pastors, siblings, friends, but leading you in the right path. So it is my prayer and it is my call upon you. Surround, your, surround yourself with people who can help you move to the next level. Hallelujah. And lo and behold, this one will come to pass. When all has been said and done, the promise will come to pass. God is going to bring his promise and you will see it and you will get to understand it. Hallelujah. But let us wait. Let us have that discipline because God is making us. He wants us to be fit for his duties. He wants us to be fit forever, for wherever he's sending us. Whether it is in your marriage, whether it is at a place of work, whether it is in church here, even in your community. I hear some people saying, me, I'm tired of this country. I am tired of this country. But when you don't learn your lessons well, even when you fly out of here, the lessons will find you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The lessons will find you there. So learn whatever you need to learn. God will be glorified. Hallelujah. Are we together, brothers and sisters? Is this hard or easy? Hallelujah. It is tough. Yeah. It is tough, but with the grace of the Lord, we will manage. Amina. We will manage because he has good plans for us. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give, us, give you a hope and a future. Many of us want to embrace the future, but let us walk with him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as we apply, get to hear the voice of God and hang on it and never drop it. When you hear it, walk with it. Keep reminding him. If it, uh, and the test is, 
when you keep asking him, God, is it you? Is it me? Is it the world? Is it the tricky stars? The trick stars? Who is it? When you see it happening, you will see people coming to confirm what you have heard. Hallelujah. Don't stick with your vision alone. Other people will come and speak into it. The situation around you will come and speak into it. Accept his discipline and live a disciplined life. Please live a disciplined life. When you see that things are not coming your way, sit back and wait and tell God, I'm waiting upon you. I'm not running away. I'm not getting into this marriage because I've, I'm tired of waiting. No. Get there because God has planned for you. Hallelujah. Embrace the times of delays. The sowing. Wait upon God prayerfully. Embrace the times of delays. Even when people ask you, you tell them, I'm still waiting. I need to hear from God. I don't know what he's doing, but he's up to something. Slowly by slowly, you will get to understand. Hallelujah. Surround yourself with the right people and the source of information. Hallelujah. They will make who you are. The right people and the right information. Don't just look for things you want to hear, but the things you need for the assignment God has given you. When I look at all of you, every one of us has a different assignment. But are we ready to get into that discipline, get into that delay, and also the discernment to make sure that we are in the right place? Hallelujah. Pray and trust God without ceasing. We've had Friday here. Wherever there is prayer, you will find me. Unless I'm sick. Hallelujah. So what hinders you from praying? Ask your neighbor. What hinders you from praying? And yet prayer is when we speak to God and then God will speak back to us. These people were hearing prophecies and they were telling them, ah, ah. 70 years, no. You are soon leaving. And then this letter came, pew, and he told them, 70 years, please settle. Settle, build houses, sleep in them, look for food, work hard, pray. Hallelujah. Pray. And then seek peace. Don't cause havoc. Sometimes when you are traumatized, you also want other people to be traumatized with you. Please don't cause havoc. Hallelujah. Learn your lessons well. What is God teaching you? What is he teaching you right now? Hallelujah. What is God teaching you? Learn your lessons well as we stand up right now. God is up to something. God is saying, be where he is and you are going to see the blessing. But make sure you learn your lessons well. Hear the right voice from the Lord. Hear the right voice through his word, through his people, through the situations. Will you open your ears? Tell God, what are you trying to tell me right now? And he's going to speak to you because he's, he's a God who wants to fulfill his promises. He's the God who wants to make you and put you in your hope and your future. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray for your people. I know... Sometimes life can be tough and challenging, but in the name of Jesus, you are giving us a way where there is no way. Speak to us, direct our paths, help us to be disciplined, help us to wait, help us to have the right discernment that we may not hear from every here and there, but we shall hear from you as we are waiting upon you on our knees. I bless you and I magnify you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the good Lord bless you, and I love you with the love of the Lord.